The Lord bless you on tonight. The Bible tells us that God can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. God is able to do anything. Above anything that we can think about, all of our situations and our, our issues that we're dealing with, God is able. God is able. Amen.
Cause he won't give up on you Don't give up on God Cause he won't give up on you He's able Hallelujah Bless the name of the Lord Bless the name of the Lord on tonight Hallelujah, he's able He's able to do what he said he would do and he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you today. We thank you, Lord God, for your goodness and for your kindness. We thank you, Lord God, for letting us know that you're able. Hallelujah. We are able to do anything that we ask or think. Above, exceedingly above, abundantly above. Anything that we ask or think, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for letting us know that in your word. Thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to be here on tonight. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for safe travel throughout the streets. We thank you, Lord God, for your mercy and for your grace. Thank you, Father God, for giving us a mind to, to learn your word. Thank you, and we ask that you would bless our speaker on tonight, oh God. Touch him in the mighty name of Jesus. Give him what to say and how to say. Be in his mind, be in his thoughts. Be in his mouth. In the name of Jesus, we bless your name and we thank you. Everyone who's coming here on tonight, oh God, we ask that you would be with them. Touch them, oh God. Be in our situations, oh God. Be in our homes. In the name of Jesus, bless our pastor, oh God. Touch him. Give him wisdom and understanding, knowledge and skill and all learning and wisdom. Touch him, oh God. Bless our first lady. In the name of Jesus, whatever her hands finds to do, oh God, we ask that you would bless it. Be with us on tonight, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. We thank you, Lord. We give you the honor and we give you the praise. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. How many know that uh, we've been redeemed? The song says, I'm never going back. <laughs> I am redeemed and I'm never going back. The Lord has rescued me. Ha, hallelujah. The Lord rescued me out of all of those going to hell. The Lord picked you out, rescued you. Hallelujah. Amen. Song says, you have rescued my life. You have rescued my life. And I'm never, I'm never going. My response is Hallelujah You're my Redeemer Hallelujah You have rescued my life Never going back. Never going back. My response is, my response is, hallelujah. You're my redeemer. Hallelujah.
anybody ask you? Anybody ask you? What's the matter? Tell them I'm a child. That I am redeemed. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If you have been redeemed, come on, give God glory, give God praise. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Praise the name of the Lord. Lift those hands and bless the name of the Lord. I am redeemed. I am redeemed. I am redeemed. I am redeemed. And I am redeemed. And God is good and he's worthy of all praise. Bible says clap those hands all ye people. Come on clap those hands and bless the name of the Lord Jesus. And we give you glory, and we give you glory, and we give you glory, and we give you glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank God for his goodness. You may be seated. Come on, look at somebody and wave at him. God is good and he's worthy of all praise. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for you being here. Uh, we greet all of the YouTube and Facebook listeners, all the members who have tuned in uh, virtually, and all the members who are here. We thank God for you, and uh, we thank God for uh, God being God, and we thank God for uh, the song that I have been redeemed. We don't know who I am. We don't know what I am about I'll just tell you that I have been redeemed by the blood of the lamb I have been re redeemed by Jesus Christ and I am saved by his power divine life now is sweet and my joy is complete for I am saved God bless you and God keep you is our prayer and we're going to um turn the furtherance of this uh, night over to the elder Perry Farrell and he will come and um, give us what thus saith the Lord um, he is, we're going to pass out some handouts he has for us but let's appreciate uh, this man of God as he comes and shares the word of God let's say God bless elder Perry Farrell Giving honor to God who's head of my life. I want to appreciate my pastor, Pastor Edwards, First Lady, all you, my father's children. Share a real brief testimony, then we get into the word. I don't have any preachers in my family. 42 years ago, my father was vacationing in Montreal and he fainted, just fell out. And they told him he had diabetes and high blood pressure. And I said, Lord, and I was just realizing what the Lord was in my life. I said, if you spare my father, I'll do whatever you want me to do. And he spared my father till last April when he passed a pneumonia, but he said, I want you to preach. And I said, oh, 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 are you sure? <laughs> and I asked, okay, if you want me to do that, I need it to be A, B, and C. And in April of 1984, it was A, B, and C. And I've had friends who ran and things happened. So I said, I'm not going to run. And ever since it's been running for the Lord, keeping the devil at my heels and doing what I need to do to get into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And I thank God for him doing that. We're going to be in Proverbs, the sixth chapter tonight, verses 16 through 19, Proverbs 6, chapter 16 through 19, and the King James Version reads, These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him, a proud look, 
a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief. Those are the things that God hates. And I was wondering, looking at the word hate, in the scriptures, the word hate can have several shades of meaning. It may denote intense hostility, sustained ill will, often accompanied by malice. That kind of hate may become a consuming emotion seeking to bring harm to the object of such hate. Hate can also denote a strong dislike, but without any intent to bring harm. The hater just wants to avoid the object of hate because they feel a loathing toward it. The Bible also uses the word hate to mean loving to a lesser degree. Let's note Jesus' words. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own soul, he cannot be my disciple. And that's Luke 14 and 26. God wants us to love him more so than anybody. He deserves our love more than anybody we love because he died, sent Jesus Christ to die for our sins. It don't mean that I'm supposed to hate my mother or hate my father, but I'm supposed to love him first and foremost in my life. If I want to get to where he wants me to be, family has to be put to the side and the will of God, the work of God has to be foremost and prevalent. Amen? Amen. So let's get into this. So seventh thing God hates, arrogant, haughty eyes. This describes a feeling of pride and looking down upon others. Amen? So Philippians 2, 3 through 11 reads, this is the New International Version, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Does that sound familiar with some people you know? I, 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 me, 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 look what I'm doing. So the God does not condone that. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. The Bible says the first shall be last and the last shall be first. That's the word. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature, God, God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant and may, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen? What? better example do we have for our lifestyle than Jesus? You know, people wear these bands, what would Jesus do? And some of them, people just wear it. But we as saints of God live that. Before we do anything, we should say, what would Jesus do? How would he handle this situation? Would he turn the other cheek? So we have to be Christ-like in all that we say and do. Amen? When we begin to think of ourselves more highly, we run into problems. Christ living in us and that the old self is now dead. Amen? Second Corinthians says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith and in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen? Jesus did it all, all to him I owe. Sin has left a crimson stain. He washed it 
white as snow. Amen? And that's what we live under. That's, that's our example. He's our role model. He left the, the book for us to follow his footsteps. So that was arrogant, haughty eyes. Next is the lying tongue. A lying tongue is one that speaks falsehood knowingly and willingly with an intention to deceive others. So you know we have people in the pulpit who are deceivers, amen? We have congregations that are deceivers, that are not preaching the word of God, but preaching something that they feel is of God. There are some that preach that if you're not baptized in the name of Jesus, you can't go to heaven, amen? I had a young lady tell me, you're not going to heaven because you weren't baptized in the name of Jesus. So I said, we both get there, then we'll talk about it. <laughs> We'll see. If we both get there, we'll have a conversation with God about it. Amen. <laughs> Often believers feel superior to other. Okay. It is most detestable evil to God to lie. God who is God of truth. Nothing we do causes us more closely resembling the devil than to lie. Amen. John 8 and 44 reads, you are of your father, the devil. And your will to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and has nothing to do with the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks according to his own nature. For he is a liar and the father of lies. Amen. The Bible makes it plain who the devil is. He, he is the author of lies and confusion. Amen. And then we talk about hands that shed innocent blood, which is a deep topic. This refers to cold-blooded murder. We may never have orchestrated killing someone or never have touched a gun or a knife. But in Matthew 5, 21 and 24, it reads, You have heard that I was said to those of old, Ye shall not murder, and whoever murders will, not, will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council. And whoever says you fool will be liable to the hell of fire. So you are offering your gift to the, if you are altering, offering your gift to the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go first be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift we can't come to the offer with bad intentions we can't come with evil or, or being upset with someone and be able to say God hear me we have to wash all that away we cannot have an alt against our brother amen if we want our prayer to get through if we want to live righteous in God we have to cleanse ourselves of all that and be righteous. Righteous means right standing with God. Amen? Amen. Hands that shed innocent blood. So we know murder, they are murderers, they get life in prison. And some give their life to Christ while they're in jail. Some say, I've changed. But the penalty is still there. Even though you might give your life to Christ in church, in prison, and try to live a Christian life, the penalty is still there. We are subject to the things that we do wrong, and we have to pay for them. Amen? Amen. And it's just a tough thing that people spend the rest of their life in jail, but then some of them get their life to Christ. And some of them lead productive lives in prison. But the point is, you took a life. And the Bible talks about taking a life. And God does not condone us murdering anyone. Amen? Amen. So it says in Matthew 3 and 15. Amen. Amen. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. That's meat. That's not infamil. That's meat. You can't have murder in your heart. Amen. So God says, and John reiterates the, this concept in 1 John 3 and 15. So our hands have to be innocent of bloodshed. 
we can't have hatred strong enough to want to murder somebody. Amen? We have to let it go. And it's harder to be mad than it is to let things go and be happy in Christ. It's hard to stay mad. It's hard to have a grudge because you have to conjure up that energy to not like someone. But it's easy to just let it go. Pastor preached a sermon, and I told everybody that maybe had an issue with me, I forgive you, I love you. Whatever problem we had, it's in the past. So now it's on them. They can continue to be mad at you, but as long as you got your slate clean, that you got it right, that you don't have to worry about being uh, a person with hatred in your heart, then I'm, my slate is clean. If you want to still not like me, that's fine. Go ahead. God bless you. But the march goes on. It says what? Narrow is the way. March, it, it goes on. A heart that devises wicked schemes. This encompasses thinking or conceiving evil against any individual or group for personal benefit or other misguided objectives. Like modern day terrorists indulge in, we're having a war right now, aren't we? There's a war going on right now. And it's all due to people devising schemes to make other people feel inferior. Amen? Any sin is basically a wicked scheme. David's sin against Uriah the Hittite and Bathsheba comes to mind, and it's in 2 Samuel, the 11th chapter. The heart of an evil man continually c contrives schemes to bring others to ruin, whether physically or spiritually. Amen? And both are harmful. If your spirit is not right, it can have a direct effect on your physical. Amen? We have to feed the spirit, and sometimes we have to put the physical under subjection. We have to fast. Like my favorite thing is root beer. I have to turn it away sometimes. I love root beer. I have to turn it away. I got to put it down. No, I can't have any this month because I'm trying to do something to get to God to make me feel better in my walk. Amen? We all have something that we really like that the body is pleased with. And sometimes we have to turn away, turn the plate over, and get with the Lord. They used to rent their clothes and get in their secret closet. So we all have to have a secret place that we go to fellowship and commune with God. Amen? Amen. So it also talks about feet that are quick to rush to evil. Those whose feet are quick to rush into evil display no resistance whatsoever to sin. They just want to jump in, be disruptive, be anti-Christ, and do their own thing. Having many examples in the Bible and having the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in Ephesians 4 and 30, it says, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Did you know God has his seal on you? He has his seal on you so that you can be redeemed. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. We know we're talking about Adam and Eve. Or, amen. The Lord said, don't touch that tree. So leave that alone. But this, the devil, the serpent, got in her thinking and corrupted her, and she took Adam along with her. Amen. Amen. So in the Garden of Eden... Eve had the first experience of temptation. Amen? So it says in Matthew 4, 1 through 11, that temptation can be overcome. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights afterwards, he was hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if you are the son of God, command these stones to become bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen? 
And that was God being, and it said after he was tempted, it said the angels came and ministered to him. And I thought that was important because it, they didn't come while it was going on, but it came after he made a stand. And sometimes you have to make a stand and then your help will come. Sometimes you got to stand flat-footed and know what God has for you and say, no, devil, you will lie. And it says, the Bible says that he, then you will get ministered to. Jesus got tempted, and then the angels came and ministered to him. He'd already won the fight, but it says the angels came thereafter. Amen? Even sin, and at that moment itself, contrast this with the attitude of Jesus. When tired and hungry, after 40 days and nights, he refused to be tempted. When you're at your lowest point, when you're at your lowest spiritual hunger, God will intervene for you and be your strength, a very present help in a time of trouble. That's the God that you serve. He is your superman. Once you need him, he is always on time. He is never late, and he is never not in a position to help his children. Amen? Amen. So it says in Genesis 3 and 6, That, so when the woman saw the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to, to make one wise, she took the fruit and ate. So she thought she was going to get smart, that she was going to be as wise as God. The devil put that in her mind. We know that wasn't true. But that's what she thought, and it caused eternal sin. Amen. And to this day, we're in a position where we have to deal with what Eve done in the Garden of Eden with Adam. Amen? False witness who pours out lies. This is a similar to sin of lying tongue mentioned earlier. But this form of lying is given to special mention as it could send an innocent person to jail or even lead to him being stoned to death as happened to Neboth thanks to false witnesses instigated by the wicked Jezebel. Amen? You can ruin somebody's life by lying. There are people who've been put in jail and then 15 years later find out they was innocent. Just think about that. You've been in prison for something you didn't do and you've paid a price and then somebody finally decides to tell the truth. But look at what you've been through those years in jail and captivity living like an animal, and you know you were innocent. And you know everybody believes, no, nah, he's guilty, that he's just trying to make it up so he can get out of jail. But it's a painful, excruciating thing when you lie on a person and they end up having to pay the cost for your, for your indiscretion. Amen? I can't imagine being in jail and somebody lying on me. I mean, just think about that. It's just irreprehensible that somebody will put a person in that, another, in that situation. Amen? So I'm looking for 1 Kings 8 and 14. 1 Kings 21, 8 through 14. So 1 Kings 21, 8 through 14 reads, And she wrote in Ahab's name, sealed them with his seal, and sent the letters to the elders, and the nobles who were dwelling in the city of Naboth, she wrote letters, wrote in a letter saying, proclaim a fast and seat Naboth with high honor among the people and seat two men, scoundrels, before him to bear witness against him. This is a setup. <laughs> That's a plot. Saying, you have blasphemed God and the king, then take him out and stone him that he may die. So the men of his city, the elders and nobles who were inhabitants of his city, did as Jezebel had sent to them, as it was written in the letters which had sent, she had sent to them. And they proclaimed a fast and seated Naboth with high honor among the people. And the two men, scoundrels, came in and sat before him, and the scoundrels witnessed against him, 
against Naboth in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth has blasphemed God and the king. Then they took him outside the city and stoned him with stones. He was innocent, but he was set up. And they took him and stoned him with stones and so that he died. Amen? Then they sent to Jezebel saying, Naboth has been stoned and he is dead. Where's the compassion? Where's the conviction? Amen? A man got stoned to death, Naboth, for no reason. He had done no wrong. Colossians 3, 9, and 10. Colossians 3, 9, and 10 is read, Do not lie one to another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds, and he have put on the new man, who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Amen? So once that conversion is made, no matter if you're Greek or Jew, it doesn't matter if you're black, white, green, or yellow, but once the conversion is made, now you are a new creature. It says, behold, the whole old man passes away, and behold, all things become new. Amen? 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 reads, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. A new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That's why God wants you to be true to him. You know, you got family say, I remember when you were 15, what you used to do. It don't matter. Remember when you used to do A and B and C? Doesn't matter. Now I'm a new creature. And then you become, well, when he becomes so holy, who do you think he is? Who do you think she is? But that's the armor that you put on once you give your life to Christ. People who can de de uh, do things that get you off track, it's family. Amen? It's family. They know you from birth. They know how you used to be. They know your habits. They know how your style was. And then you march in and say, I'm saved. I'm sanctified. I'm Holy Ghost filled. And they start looking at each other like, what, what are they trying to prove? So that's why God says, put him first. Put his goals in your life first. Make him the head of your life. And if mama don't want to come along, so be it. If daddy don't understand, so be it. I remember I, I preached a sermon and my daddy walked up to me and said, well, I'm still your daddy. <laughs> he said, I'm still your daddy. But I had to do what thus saith the Lord. Yeah, you're still my father. But I had to do what thus saith the Lord. He understand. Sometimes family's not going to understand you, and that's okay because God understands you now. We have a new family. We are all family now. Amen? Amen. That was a rough one. That was a rough ride home. <laughs> that was a rough ride home. And then Matthew 5 and 9 says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they should be called the sons of God. Amen? God wants peace. He wants peace in our life. And when things come to disrupt the boat or rock the boat, we have what? A savior to pray to. He told Peter what? Upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. Amen? When your feet is on a rock, you feel safe. But get on some sinking sand. Get on some sinking sand and try to get your footing because that sand's going to sink. And as you're sinking with it, you're reaching for help. Amen? You see those movies that they throw them a bush just in time and pull them out? But God puts us on a solid rock. He makes sure that we are in a safe place. He will let no hurt, harm, or danger befall us. Amen? He says, I see you won't be begging bread. 
And that's the word. So we have a savior, a heavy load share, a burden bearer. We have a doctor in the hospital. We have a lawyer in the courtroom. And God does not leave us comfortless. He does not. He makes sure his people have a lifeline to salvation. We make mistakes. We have things that we have to grapple with every morning. Lord, forgive me. Lord, star me on my way. Lord, thank you for being with me. You know, there's people who want to praise God and can't. They have strokes. They have physical ailments. And they can't praise God. So let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. God don't want you to have to get jump started to start praising him. If you think about where you were, if you think about where you could have been, when you think about what he's brought you from, that should be an automatic praise in your heart. You could have been dead and gone. You could have not survived COVID, but God saw fit to make sure that you were spared to give a testimony. He don't want you to keep it under a bushel basket. He wants you to spread his good news. Amen? Amen. He has done all that he needs to do, and we need to follow suit. We should never be scared to tell somebody about God. Never, not at work, not on the playground, not at uh, our functions. We should never be afraid. It was one New Year's Eve, and I got saved, and, you know, they partying and drinking, and me and a, another brother started talking about God, and we looked up, and everybody had left the room. <laughs> everybody left the room. They didn't want to hear it. I'm talking 25, 30 people. We looked up, and they were gone because what? The word of God either draws you or it drives you. It drove them downstairs for some Hennessy and whatever they was drinking. They were having a good time, but we were talking about God. Amen. It was New Year's Eve. I don't care if it's Christmas Day. It could be Thanksgiving. You should always, always want to talk about God. Amen. So we have brothers who stir up dissension. They want to keep stuff going. They want to cause controversy. They walk in, look who they can, who they can knock off the rhythm. And God hates that. Anybody who, who wants to disrupt God, he hates that. Anybody who wants to put themselves first, God hates that. Psalms 133 and 1 says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. If you walk into church and there's a lot of strife and mischief, just turn right on around, go out the door, get in your car and go home because God ain't in there. Peace and harmony rule in God's environment. Amen. We come in wanting to worship and praise. We come in wanting to get filled up because sometimes we get here, we are empty. But by the time I leave and walk out that door, I should be rejuvenated and revive because something has been said to let me know that God is able to get me through another week. He's able to solve my problems. He's able to lift me up on solid ground. Amen. So when we leave out of here, we ought to be between the music and the, and the sermon and the spirit of God being in this place. We ought to be uplifted. Amen. We don't deal with dissension and brothers in here. We just, hey, the door's right there. You can leave. Amen? We are a family in Christ. We might not know each other's names sometimes. I'm still getting learning names. But I know that I'm in the family, in the household of faith. Amen? And you should always feel like when you come in here, I'm getting ready to get something. I'm getting ready to get something. And it's going to make me better so I can get through the week. When I run out the door, I want to say, yes, Lord. You are my way maker. You are my Lord of Lords. You my King of Kings. You have done it again on time and in your own way. Amen. That's the God that you serve. And, and when people get excited in themselves, not have to be 
sung to praising or being preached into praising, that's when God gets his glory. Amen? Because it says hallelujah, hallelujah is the highest form of praise. Amen? So when I say that God know I mean business. And I can say it soft or I can say it loud. But as long as it's in there, something on the inside, something on the inside is going to move me to praise God and in his glory because he deserves it. Amen? Amen. Give God some praise. I'm almost done, y'all. I know y'all tired of me. 1 John 2, 9 and 11. He who says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. He who loves his brother abides in the light and there is no cause for stumbling in him. But he who hates his brother and is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Amen? Think about this for a second. You driving down 696 with your eyes closed. <laughs> Paint a picture of that. You're automatically expecting something bad to happen, aren't you? Because your eyes are closed. And you know that you're going to hit something or somebody's going to hit you or you're going to be in a world of hurt. There are people walking around in that kind of darkness. They're getting ready to get hit. They're getting ready to get a calamity happen. Because their eyes are shut spiritually. And when your eyes are shut spiritually, you can't even think about any good thing happening to you. Amen? You can't. They're walking in darkness. We need to lead them to the marvelous light. Amen? Amen. James 4 and 7 says, I should know that one by heart. James 4 and 7. Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Amen? I was reading in my word about Michael and the devil having a, a, a tussle over Moses' grave, over Moses' body. And once Michael said, I rebuke thee, the Lord rebuke you, the devil had to take off. Amen? The devil had to leave. After all that struggling and, and going back and forth, once he said, he had to go. Because... The devil has no dominion but Christ. When he allowed the devil to tempt Job, he said, don't touch his soul. You can take everything from him. You can mess with his body, but do not touch his soul because his soul is mine. Amen? And Job had done no wrong. He didn't have any issue with God, but God just put him to that test. And what happened? He got double for his trouble. His wife said, curse God and die. He said, no, woman, you foolish. That's my God. That's my Savior. In your darkest time, God is your hero. In your darkest time of despair, guess what? You look to the hills, which come of your help. My help coming from the Lord. Amen? See, sinners can't look to the hills. They look to the bottle. They look to legalized marijuana. <laughs> they look to partying but look at what you got you can look to the hills and here come your help amen your help coming from the Lord amen so God doesn't like people that come in and want to start stuff and, and dissension is going on because he is not an author of confusion amen Ephesians 5 25 through 27 reads and this is a harmonious scripture. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word that he might present her to himself a glorious church and having, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but he that should be holy and without blemish. Holy and without blemish. Amen? And that's what God is looking from us. That we can be holy and without blemish. When disruption comes in a church, we know God is not the author of that. Amen? 
when people try to come in, they want to take over and they want to do 15-minute prayers and, and, and practice that kind of thing. That's not a God. God gives you what to say and how to say in your heart and soul. Amen. He gives you the humility. There's a preacher wanted a $60 million airplane. I was listening to uh, Jamal Bryant's message. He said 85% of what Jesus did was wrong. I said, what? Heard him with his own mouth. 85 of what Jesus did was wrong? Are you serious? Jamal Bryant? He said it with his own words. And I'm saying, when false prophets come, you just get your stuff. You get to moving. I would have got up and walked out. 85% of what my God did? was wrong? Are you serious? That's why we have to know the word by the word. Amen? Amen. 1 Corinthians 4 and 9 But concerning brotherly love you have no need that I should write to you for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. God taught us to love one another. So who better teach you than God? Amen? We are supposed to love one another. God hates sin. And there's a problem. People say, well, God knows my heart. But if you're living in sin, God knows where you're going to. <laughs> God knows that I was born this way. But if you ain't right, you know where you're going. God knows where you're going. And people make that as an excuse. Well, God knows my heart. You don't go to church. You ain't trying to live right. You ain't trying to get yourself together. God also knows that the soul that sinneth, <laughs> it shall die. Amen? So we can make all the excuses we want, but God is the righteous judge. Amen? And I thank him for this, this lesson. We don't hate people. God hates the sin. He hates the things that keep us from being close to him. He don't hate people. God loves all people, but he hates sin. And every person will get an opportunity to get right with God. Every person born will get to hear the word of God at least one time. And we're free agents. God don't break the door down. He don't kick it in and say, come on. But he says, yeah, I stand at the door and knock. If you let me come in, if you let me come in, if you let me come in, I will sup with you. But we got to let them come in. We got to let them come in. We're free agents. I'm free to make a choice. As for me and my house, what Joshua say? As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And when somebody step in your house, they should feel something different. People can't smoke in your house. People can't drink in your house. People can't curse in your house. They can't. As soon as they step in the door, you got to set boundaries in your environment because your house is where God dwells. No drinking. No smoking. No cursing. Not in my house. And feel free to invite yourself to leave if you don't like how I do things. Amen? It's not a popularity contest. It's not. I'm not trying to be the most popular because if you love God, a lot of people are not going to like you. 30 years I dealt with folks that didn't like me. 30 years I dealt with a, a depression because everything I did wasn't enough. But guess what? Every time I got on my knees, everything I, th I thank God for what he did in my career, I knew that it was a God-led career. Amen? Everything he allowed me to do, he let my enemy and I'm going to sit down. He let my enemy become my footstool. Amen? When they thought I was in the grave, they looked and wasn't nobody there. When they thought they had buried me, where he go? Because my God lifted me up. And he placed my feet on solid ground. And the devil is a lie. And he couldn't hold me down because I give all the credit to my God. Your God. Our Father. So don't let nobody get you distracted. Don't let the job tell you that you can't do what you need to do because that's all about the devil 
try to distract you. Amen? Amen. I thank God for this time. I thank you for all you, my father's children, and keep praying for us one for another. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. God bless. God bless. God bless. God bless, God bless the word, God bless the word. These seven things God hates. And he went down the list. And the key thing that he said, God did, never said he hated people. He hates the sin. And this list represents the sin or the things that people do that is not of God. We thank God for the word. Let's appreciate uh, Elder Perry Farrell. God bless you. Wonderful word. One of those examining words. One of those words that you look in the mirror. You know, you put something on, you look in the mirror to make sure you're okay. And these, one of these reminding words that, Lord, I don't want anything that's not like you in my heart. Come on, lift those hands and say, Lord, search me. If you find anything that's not like you, take it out or reveal it to me so I can get myself straight. I don't want to miss heaven. I want to be right. I want to be whole. And we appreciate that. And a lot of times, as I was listening to this, a lot of times we'll go to this scripture and we'll only stop at pride. But these things are equal and God doesn't like these things so not just the proud look or the haughty eyes, the lying tongue the hands that shed innocent blood, cold blooded murder a heart that devises wicked schemes that's just an evil person uh, you know these modern day terrorists and People that just hate, and uh, you can you can look at what's going on with Hamas and Israel. Feet that are quick to rush into people that just like to get into stuff. People just like sin. Just just want to be round wrong. Just comfortable in wrong. False witness who pours out lies, lying not just lying, but as as elders said. People that lie on people. Some of us have gone through that on our jobs. You, you've been lied on. And God does not like that. A man who stirs up dissension, a dissension among brothers. Keeping up stuff among the brethren. Keeping up stuff. Uh, keeping up stuff. It just like to get stuff going. Those things... God hates those things we want to stay when there's a whole lot more in the New Testament and uh, we thank God that God he is so long suffering that he warns us and he brings things to our remembrance and he convicts us so we thank God that uh, when we are saved and we want to do right and we have the Holy Ghost he can convict us and we thank God for that. Father God, thank you for your word. Thank you for uh, the, the, the man of God, the vessel that you used tonight to deliver this word. I pray, Father, that um, this examining word, that if someone is struggling in these areas or someone is just uh, in these areas, that you will just uh, convict them. Or if they have heard the word, that they will not run from it. As you said in Revelation, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to your people, to the church. And let us hear, Father, not just to be here, but to hear what you are saying. We want to be right. We want to be made whole. And thank you that you are just so long-suffering, that you did not just kill us when we did wrong, but you saved us and forgave us in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. Lift those hands and just give God praise. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And we praise your name. We praise your name. Lord, we'll be careful to give your name the praise and all that you will do. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. You may be seated. Come on, look at somebody and say, and the best is yet to come. Amen. Looking forward to what God is going to do. Looking forward to what God is, is doing. And um, um, we don't know in the world uh, all that's going on. But uh, even when you read Ezekiel and um, it says the nations will come against Israel. Um, Israel is where Jesus will come back. Uh, that, that region, uh, according to Revelation, according to uh, Daniel, according to Ezekiel and other um, places in the Bible that talk about the end time, Jesus is coming back. And he is coming back uh, to physically resurrect his people uh, from this world. But then uh, the Bible suggests that uh, he will sit physically on this earth and that will be in Jerusalem and um, but um, in that time before he comes the Bible says that uh, uh, Magog and Gog um, will, will come against Israel no one knows no theologian knows what Magog is so uh, we, we believe that it's an evil nation that will come against Israel. Last time Israel went to war, I think it was 1973. Now they're at war. Um, we don't know if this war is what the Bible's talking about, but when things like that happen, uh, you better be on alert that uh, Jesus is soon to come. He is soon to come. He is soon to come. And uh, Israel will prevail um, because that's God's uh, chosen people. And, um, and we just pray for what's going on. We don't know everything. We know what the Bible tells us. And studying the end time or eschatology could be somewhat confusing. And I've, I've taught on it once, and I'm going to go back to it. I've taught on it a couple of times. Um, but just remind, remember that uh, Matthew the 24th chapter I believe uh, Jesus just sums it up like this and I tell people when you start trying to uh, figure out what's going on in the world uh, read, read Matthew 24 and Jesus basically said this I'm coming back and you don't know when but you better be ready so Jesus is coming back we don't know when he's coming back, but you better be ready when he comes. Uh, so uh, the signs of the time are everywhere, and there's a brand new feeling in the air. Keep your eye upon the eastern sky. Lift up your head. Redemption draws nigh. And we thank God. So uh, we don't know what's going to happen to the UAW that's going to affect the economy. Uh, so you be mindful. Be mindful that the economy will be affected, especially this metro area. But um, there's a lot of things going on. So pray. I said all that to say pray for this nation. And pray uh, that uh, God will uh, give grace and mercy. Uh, what is our consolation? Isaiah said, uh, tell the righteous it will be well with you. So. It's going to be well with the righteous. It's going to be well with the righteous. Um, that's why you never hear me in the pulpit talking about gas prices and talking about inflation because the Bible says, my God shall supply all your needs according to this economy, no, according to his riches and glory. So we are aware of what's going on. We pray for one another, but we know that God will take care of us if we stay 
with him. Do I have a witness out there? Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Elder Farrell. Thank you. Awesome word. Awesome word. Awesome word. We appreciate the scripture. I appreciate a, a preacher who goes to the Bible. And I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. It's something to take home with. Take something to uh, mull over. And, um, and you can let that be your devotion. And just look at that and just... If you're not there, thank God that, God, I am not where this scripture says I am. And I thank you for that. And I pray for those who are uh, needs to be delivered. God bless you. Uh, Friday, uh, you don't want to miss Friday. I'm inviting all of you here Friday. Um, the caterer was here early, uh, dropping off some, some materials. And uh, um, the, the Life Center has been set up. So we got the tables out. So we're expecting you to come out 7 o'clock on uh, Friday. 7 o'clock on Friday uh, to have dinner with us. You can come out and have dinner. It'll be on First Lady and myself and the Tuckers. And um, uh, pray for Sister Verna Tucker. She thought she could fly in, but... Uh, you know, she, she's working, she's on assignment, um, and she cannot come. Um, and we talked to her, she cannot come, but um, uh, Deacon John Tucker will be here. But come have dinner with us. Uh, Chef Diallo, I think his name, Chef Diallo, uh, a, a new, a new uh, chef we're using this year. Um, and uh, so let's come out and just enjoy uh, the fellowship time, of course. Um, tomorrow is prayer uh, conference call. Thursday is prayer here in the sanctuary. And Sunday we'll be here in worship and fellowship. And then, uh, of course, uh, 5 o'clock Sunday, um, Mother Morass and Team Ahava will be here. Uh, so so stay, stay tuned for a wonderful time of fellowship. That's one thing I do miss. I do miss fellowship. COVID kind of uh, made us a little isolated, uh, and then before that, um, seemed like all the all the cooks of the church <laughs> passed on, and uh, we used to have somebody in the kitchen every Sunday. But all the all those mothers passed on, and this new generation, this this uh, Chick Fil A generation. <laughs> Y'all don't like, y'all don't cook like uh, the, the old mothers, but uh, be that as it may, uh, we're going to have dinner uh, cooked on Friday night, so please be here. God bless you. Uh, thank God for my wife for life. She's a wonderful woman. She's a wonderful woman of God, and I am just enjoying my 35 years with this woman. She is a vessel. She is a... Uh, a gift to the body of Christ and we thank you and I am so privileged and blessed to love you God bless you keep us in your prayers let's stand and be dismissed God bless all of you here and remember the best is yet to come I was reading a scripture about the hope of salvation I can't remember what scripture I was reading uh, the hope of salvation and um, the Lord said we really missed the teaching in that scripture when it says hope in other words uh, always hope for deliverance always hope that God will bring you out and the devil can steal hope that's my point if the devil steals hope He'll get you to give up. And when he gets you to give up, fear will come in instead of faith. So when he says don't lose hope, that's really a powerful statement. Don't lose hope. If you lose hope, uh, you, you know, you just give up. If you just give up and say, ain't nobody coming for me. I might as well just stop treading water. I'm going to die. If you lose hope, then you won't fight. You got to be too tough to quit. 
Come on, just say, I'm too tough to quit. Don't lose hope. I don't care how, how it looks. Don't lose hope. Amen. God bless you. Bow that head. And if you have an offering, you can give it to uh, Deacon Andre James or uh, we'll put our giving banners on the screen. Father God, in Jesus' name, thank you for the word. Thank you for the book of Proverbs. Thank you for the man of God who have, who have reminded us the things, the sins uh, that you uh, hate. And we know that you hate all sin. And we thank you just that we want to be free and separated from everything that you do not like. Thank you, Father. As we leave this place, take us to our destination safely. Uh, bring us back at the appointed time. I pray for everyone traveling over the highways, whether they're taking 8 Mile, whether they're taking 696, whether they're just going around the corner. Protect them. Keep us from all accidents and evil in the name of Jesus. And bring us back at the appointed time. And let your glory be revealed in us. And let your presence stay with us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank God. Amen. You are dismissed. We love you.